Hello, welcome everybody. I'm Christoph Baratti and uh, I'm giving a master class at the Salin Royal Academy. And please uh, welcome uh, Samuele, who is playing for us Brahms Sonata D minor, first movement.
Thank you very much. Bravo, bravo. Uh, thank you to you on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> there are many, many uh, great uh, things musically and also obviously you master your instrument pretty well. Uh, and I must say, one of the global things which I uh, feel are a little bit uh, missing is just going for it. You know, in Brahms' music, there are so many different uh, emotions happening. In this, in this particular uh, first movement, uh, we have a basic, quite uh, sad character, and the drive is still always there. So I feel that to arrive uh, with bigger enthusiasm or bigger energy to the culminations and to the dramatic points is absolutely uh, necessary. And sometimes I have the feeling that the more you are approaching uh, a dramatic point, the more you are retreating at the same time. So I think it's very important to feel this uh, no compromise uh, energy, you know, this absolutely taking it and, and uh, there is, like there is no going back. That's the feeling that, that should, should uh, arrive to those points. So um, all in all, very good musicality, very good control of vibrato. I would suggest that in order to make also uh, a wider range of dynamic, your, your vibrato can be also maybe adjusted to it. So when there is sotto voce, when there is a piano, pianissimo, you can really uh, almost do a non vibrato. And when it comes to the culmination points, then your vibrato can go accordingly. Okay, uh, let's start in detail. Um, <clears throat> and then we will talk also about what happens um, uh, in the middle section. Yes, yes, it's, it's very good, but I already feel like there is no real decision to go for a tempo. It's like a little bit hesitating. And your accompaniment, which is actually not a pure accompaniment, it's like a counterline to your theme. It's, it's already having this drive. You know, this movement in the accompaniment is is in many, many cases present. So all this cantabile sort of uh, atmosphere is always getting this drive. So if you start rather hesitating with your tempo, it's very difficult yeah. to accommodate. So, so I don't know, something like... Mm. first question mark. Yeah. Okay? Let, let's try to imagine, it's also very important in music, don't just play what's, don't just focus on what's happening right now. Always have a vision on when you, where you start and where is it going. And try to keep that line in mind. So then you have, you have the a better connection, better long phrasing to that point. Very good, very good. Now you have you have a certain drive. Now uh, it's a tiny bit, uh, it feels like it's difficult to move out from the context. I think the espressivo kind of attitude in this can be a little bit emphasized whenever he, he gives you uh, uh, 
those Schweller signs, those crescendo diminuendo signs, those are possibilities and requests for you to, to show a little bit of, of emotion. So uh, I don't know about Dumbo, it always feels a little bit stuck. When you start Dumbo, it's, I mean, it's possible to start Dumbo, but it's difficult. It's possible, but I would rather start a bow. And this is the first moment when he brings his triplets. You know, Brahms is, is a huge fan of triplets. I, I think there is basically almost no piece of his own which is really having this game of triplets. He loves triplets. So it's, it's quite nice to emphasize that with a little bit of timing. It's not ta 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 It's actually somehow giving us a feeling of expansion of, of these emotions. Okay, let's try once more. Very good, very good, very good. The start was excellent. The start was excellent, but if you, if you lose that tension between then you lose the possibility of a long line. Yes, yes, excellent, excellent. There is only one tiny uh, detail. If your bow goes a little bit faster than you wish, you will be always stuck at the end of the bow. So it's very important to always keep some control at the beginning of a long uh, note, at the beginning of a long bowing. Always try to keep in mind the more you spare at the beginning, the more you can spend at the end. So you have more freedom on how to deal with the change. Yeah? <laughs> I try to, to make as much uh, space for my end of the end of the long notes or end of the long bowings. Okay. Very good, very good, very good, excellent. So many good things. Now, you are so focused on this and that, and now slower bow and that. So now you are starting to forget about your original, you know, connection with the piece. So obviously, these are things which you can work on. But now let's do one version, which is absolutely you playing this wonderful music without, without too many considerations, and then we, can, we follow. Yeah, sorry. it's very important to at least look yeah, at your at your partner because she's she's very great and everything, but she cannot just guess, you know, when when will the bow start to move. So it's 
it's actually not that so, so difficult, but it's very important to put the bow and then just look. You see? It's even a tiny thing she will notice. Once more, once more, yeah. yeah. Don't, 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 don't. So almost with the bow or with the eyes. Good. 